on the 22nd of August, world leaders will gather in Johannesburg, South Africa. They will attend the 15th annual BRICS Summit, their first such in-person meeting since the pandemic. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Chinese President Xi Jinping and Brazilian President Lula da Silva will be greeted by South Africa's Cyril Ramaphosa. Vladimir Putin of Russia will not join in person. He may attend virtually. The BRICS was once heralded as the future of a globalized economy, but the grouping has since lost its sheen. There is lack of unity and mutual suspicion. So what is the BRICS? How did it start? Why is the group divided? And will more members join it soon? More importantly, why should you care? Hello and welcome to Between the Lines. I'm Palki Sharma and on this show, we'll try to read between the lines, the stated and the unstated, the obvious and the hidden, to bring you the full story. So first things first, what is BRICS and how did it come into being? It's an interesting story, also ironical. This is a group that was meant to counter the West, but its origin is linked to the same West. In 2001, Jim O'Neill was an economist at the Goldman Sachs. He made an observation about the developing world. He pointed out how high the growth rates were in Brazil, Russia, India and China. He called them the emerging stars. The nations that would rule the globalized economy of the 21st century, he coined an acronym, BRIC, B-R-I-C, Brazil, Russia, India, and China. And what did these countries do? They took the name and ran with it. They pitched the idea of cooperation, sort of like the G7, but for the global south. So the name was coined, and these countries began talking. But the real push came during the global financial crisis of 2008. The markets collapsed. There was panic across the globe. But in the global south, there was growing wariness. Countries started questioning the US-led financial system. They were doubting its credibility. In 2009, the BRIC leaders met for the very first time. Two years later, South Africa joined. And the group came to be known as BRICS. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. B-R-I-C-S. Next question. How important is the BRICS? This block straddles one quarter of the world. It accounts for more than 40% of the global population. That's over 3 billion people. Their combined GDP is more than $23 trillion. It accounts for 26% of the global economy. And it is this economy that was at the heart of BRICS when it started. They wanted to take on the US-led financial system. And for that, the BRICS did two things. One, they rallied for reforms, both at the World Bank and the IMF, that's the International Monetary Fund. They asked for reforms here. And then they set up their own institutions, like the New Development Bank. It opened in 2017, and since then, it has funded multiple projects in these countries. But the way it functions is very different from the IMF. You see, the IMF sets conditions for loans. Their motto is quite simple. Make changes in your country, and then we will lend you money. But the New Development Bank has none of that. It wasn't imposing like the IMF. It also allowed the use of national currencies, which brings us to another proposal, a BRICS currency, one that can take on the US dollar. It's been a topic of discussion for quite some time now. The idea was mooted by Brazil last year. But this year in South Africa, it is off the table. Why? Because the BRICS still functions in a world where dollar is the king. 60% of global currency reserves are held in the US dollar. 88% of international transactions use the dollar. The greenback may have seen some decline, but it won't be replaced by the BRICS currency, not anytime soon. Also, while the idea of a BRICS currency may be noble, it lacks political traction. And that's because there are cracks in the block. So how divided is the BRICS? All members essentially agree on one thing, challenging Western financial hegemony. There's agreement on that. But when it comes to all other issues, there is a serious lack of consensus. The bloc is made up of five nations. All of them have different interests and priorities, often clashing interests. They don't align with each other. You see, the BRICS is an informal alliance. Every country shares the platform. Every country has a veto power. But in most cases, national interest trumps the shared agenda. Take, for instance, India and China. They're locked in a border standoff. In 2020, there were clashes in Galwan. Ties have been strained. Their leaders keep meeting at BRICS summits, but they do not find common ground. Then there is the war in Ukraine. Russia is pitted against the West. China is backing Russia. But India refuses to take this anti-Western stand. India believes in bridging divides and balancing ties. 
It does not want to be boxed in any camp or alliance. India has historical ties with Russia and a growing partnership with America. It wants to preserve both. So the BRICS is divided. They also can't seem to agree on the way forward. China wants to expand the BRICS. Russia and South Africa agree, but India and Brazil do not. At least 40 countries want to join this group, 4-0. The list includes countries like Saudi Arabia, Argentina and Egypt. China wants them to join to form a group that takes on the US. Now, China and the US are engaged in a trade war. They have an axe to grind. Russia and the US are fighting a proxy war. With more members in the BRICS, Moscow wants to win more partners globally. And South Africa is also on the same page. They also want more members. But Brazil is resisting expansion. It fears that its stature will be diluted. And India is on the fence. New Delhi thinks that expanding the BRICS will strengthen Beijing's influence. It does not want the BRICS to become a China bloc. So again, no consensus. What does this mean for the future of BRICS? Is the bloc still relevant? Or does it lack identity? In 2001, these nations were seen as drivers of the global economy, but 22 years later, the scenario is very different. Yes, the bloc has created an alternative to the IMF and the World Bank, but the new development bank is in no way close to them. In the last decade, it approved loans worth $33 billion. That's one third of what the World Bank committed to giving in just one year. And beyond that, there is little to show. So are the glory days of BRICS over? Its members have internal challenges, and these challenges are bigger than their common agenda. Russia is fighting a war, diplomatically isolated by the West and hit by sanctions. China's economy is suffering. There's deflation, there's growing unemployment, the property market is slumping and companies are leaving China. Brazil's economy too is contracting. There is rising poverty and inequality. As for South Africa, its unemployment crisis is a ticking time bomb. Millions are jobless, which leaves us with India. The only growth story here. One of the few bright spots in the gloomy global economy, also not without its own set of challenges. So where does it leave India? Should it stay or leave the bloc? In the 2000s, BRICS was an outcome of optimism and hope. But today it seems to lack purpose. Yes, the BRICS leaders still meet every year, but the bloc needs to do more. One, it needs to find a way to overcome its political differences. It needs a more unified approach. Easier said than done, of course. Two, no country should be allowed to hijack the platform. And three, the agenda needs to expand. It needs to go beyond economic diplomacy. So should India invest its time and effort here? The answer is yes. The thing with diplomacy and politics is that it's usually better to be in the room than out of it.